Hello friends, welcome back. We are going to learn the data protocols in IoT through this session. This is a very important topic. We will learn some of the very famous protocols, very frequently used protocols through this session. Well, what is the protocol all about? It's nothing but set of rules that you have framed towards transmitting or receiving data between the devices. These rules can include and define parameters like the size of the packet that has to be transmitted, the time gap between two packets which are to be received or to be transmitted, which connectivity type you are going to use, all these can be defined pretty clearly with the protocol. Can I design my own protocol? Yes, you can design your own protocol and in this session we are going to learn four of the very famous protocols which are widely used in IoT for data, I mean transmit data. We have constrained application protocol which is commonly called as COAP. Message Queue Telemetry Transport Protocol, MQTT. This is one of the most frequently used protocols. Message Queue Telemetry Transport Protocol. Advanced Message Queuing Protocol, AMQP. And finally, DDS, which is nothing but Data Distribution Service. So, MQTT, AMQP are most widely used and they have industry level recognitions. They are used to send and receive data from R to the cloud. MQTT is used in applications where the data is to be sent to the cloud of your choice like Firebase or Adafruit and it's a very lightweight and secure protocol and not vulnerable to any attack or hacks. So we got four protocols COAP, MQTT, AMQP, DDS. MQTT and AMQP are the most commonly used at the industry level. The constrained application protocol, the term itself, the name itself says that it is constrained. COAP is a data protocol but can be used with the devices that have very low bandwidth availability. So it is used mostly in machine to machine communication and is designed specifically for IoT applications based on HTTP. So please understand it is used for applications which can go IoT applications which can go based on the HTTP protocol. And the most important point is it can be implemented for small scale applications like the house, warehouses kind of applications. And COAP has got another very important point to be understood. It is user datagram protocol based, which is nothing but UDP. So this keeps the communication light and the compatibility is there with UDP. But the moment you call it UDP, it is becoming insecure. So this can be easily attacked and it is not suitable for industry level or some applications which should not be attacked and which should be prevented from all sort of external disturbances. So COAP is lightweight. COAP is lightweight because it is using UDP as underlying content and because it is UDP you definitely have insecurity connected over it and because of this you cannot use it in applications where you cannot really compromise with respect to security. And MQTT is the best. MQTT uses unique way of transferring data between the connect, connected IoT devices. There are three important parts. There are three important components of this protocol, which is publisher, broker and subscriber. You take your Tata Sky or any service, for example, Sun, Sun Networks or Tata Sky. What do you do? You subscribe for a particular channel, you receive the channel. That's exactly is the mechanism which is called as publish and subscribe. So you are going to publish and subscribe and you have something called as broker in between, which is going to play a major role any device which has to send or receive data and this sending or receiving will happen only through the intermediary component called as broker. Sending data to the broker is called as publishing. So I'm going to publish data but I'm going to do it to the broker and receiving data will happen from the broker and it is called as subscribing. Please understand you are going to publish something onto the broker and someone is going to collect the data, subscribe the data from the broker. The term you push the data onto the broker is called publishing. The term someone collecting the data from the broker is called subscription. So it is a clearly publisher subscriber model. It is one of the best. It is one of the best in terms of data handling. Understand the situation. We are, we are getting into a situation where the subscriber is lost with the broker. What will the broker do now is the broker stores all the messages which comes from the publisher in a queue and he is sent to the subscriber whenever the subscriber becomes available. Whenever the connect is re-established, you can send the data from the broker to the subscriber. So the data is not lost. When the link between the publisher and the broker is lost, the subscribers are notified by predefined warnings. By appropriate warnings, the subscribers are getting notified by. So the data is completely organized and the packet loss, even if it happens, it is, it is properly notified. So MQTT uses TCP. So it is very easy for integrating and it provides more security. It provides more reliability over the COAP. Well, the next one is advanced message queuing protocol. 
This can be called as an uh, elder sister of MQTT because it is slightly a modification of MQTT but it is more sophisticated and at the same time it is very reliable. MQTT what has happened is we can handle only one queue. All the messages, all the loads comes via that one queue and it goes in. But here AMQP can handle multiple queues. You can see the figure here. There are multiple queues available here and appropriately the connect happens. So when there is multiple queue, it appropriately reduces the waiting time and it becomes really fast. So the subscribers can really retrieve the content whatever they want, whatever they are intended to in a much faster manner than what they could do with AMQ, than what they could do with MQTT. So AMQP is advanced, AMQP is secured, AMQP is fast. It implements the same techniques of data handling like MQTT in terms of security and in terms of reliability. But the number of queues you have is different. It is most most used in the industry right now at this moment. The final one is DDS. DDS is nothing but data distribution service. This is very scalable, very reliable, which uses something called as submit subscribe technique. It uses multicasting. The point here that we need to understand is it uses multicasting to convey high quality of service to applications. And DDS has the fact centric submit subscribe, DCPS and statistics local reconstruction layer, DLRL as the fundamental layers. So we can go ahead with more discussion on DDS and AMQP in the near future. I will make a session separately on AMQP plus DDS. Until then, it's bye from me. I hope it was very useful and you understood something out of the session. If you like the channel and the content, kindly subscribe. If you have any questions, go ahead and type it in the comment sections. I'll be very happy to answer. Thank you.